Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing another declutter today and I'm going to be going through all of my cheek products. So bronzers, blushes, highlights, and contours. So I'm gonna pull these out and then we're gonna get started. If you haven't seen the other declutters I've been doing lately, I will link them um, in the description box. I've done my lipsticks, my liquid lipsticks, and my eyeshadow palettes. I actually think I did really well with all of those. So I'm a little bit we're gonna see how I do today. All right, I'm gonna pull all these out and then we will dive right in. Okay, so I've got 36 products here total. I'll be interested to see how much we narrow that down. I think we should start with bronzers and contours. Okay, I think this is gonna be the smallest category today. I only have six items in here. Um, let's start with this. This is the first bronzer I ever bought. It is the Honey bronzer from the body shop if I can open it there we go and I love this this has a major dip on it I've had it for a good couple of years but recently I've actually been picking this up and using it a lot so I definitely want to keep this I highly recommend this for those of you with super pale skin that want something bronzy without looking over the top I have it in the lightest shade and it's really really natural looking sample here. It's the Lorac Tantalizer Baked Bronzer. Um, this was like a gift with purchase type of thing. It's totally nice. It's a little bit more yellow toned than the, um, than the Body Shop bronzer. I just never reach for this. It's not, I don't know. I mean, it's totally nice. I just don't remember the last time I've used it. And usually when I use it, I just use it as an eyeshadow. So I don't think this is something that I necessarily need to keep. I will be passing this one along. Another sample I have is Hoola by Benefit. This is the only Hoola I've tried and I really like it. It actually does work well for contouring on me. I don't like it as much for bronzing because it's just a little bit I don't know, kind of ashy toned. It's not super cool toned, which I also like, so this one I do want to keep. And then this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette is a favorite of mine. I have the Dolce de Leche, and I really cannot use this lighter shade. It's too dark for, it's too dark to be a highlight on me, but I love this contour shade. It's a little bit more intense, but it's just, you guys, it is so buttery and pigmented. It's probably out of the four bronzers I have, the nicest texture. Like it is crazy creamy. I highly recommend this if you're looking from the drugstore. Beautiful. So obviously I'm keeping this one. All right, we've gotten rid of one so far. Next up I have two contour and highlight sticks. I actually did a cheap or cheaper on these. Um, I use these very rarely. I do prefer for the um, format of the Wet n Wild, but I really like the tone of the Maybelline contour. Again, the highlights are fine, but don't really add much to my super fair skin. I mean, I don't need both since I don't really use either of them. I think that, I think I'm actually gonna keep the Maybelline even though the, I think I even recommended the Wet n Wild in that Cheaper Cheaper and I stand by that, it is a superior product. Um, I just like the tone of that, I just like the tone of that contour and since I use it so rarely, I don't think I'm gonna wear it down. Yeah, I think I'll keep the Maybelline and pass along the Wet n Wild to someone who actually might get more use out of it. Okay, so of my bronzers and contours, I'm keeping four and getting rid of two. Okay, blushes, I have 20. I have a good bit more and we're just gonna dive in here. The first thing I see that needs to go are these cream blushes. These are the Revlon Photo Ready Cream Blushes in Coral Reef is the orange. Flushed is this kind of hot pink and then Charmed is the more mauve color. I actually loved these, but they are old. I think I, I used them last summer still, but um, now they've just, they're definitely past their prime. And I just don't reach for cream products as much as I used to, so those have to go. Next up, I can just grab off the bat this Essence Mosaic Blush. Um, I talked about this in a haul, in a haul update. This is a perfectly fine blush that I just think is a little bit boring. I mean, it's just pink. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't feel like I need this one, and I know someone who would like this, so I'm gonna pass this one along. Another blush that has been in my collection for years is this Lorac blush in Soul. 
I've used this one to death. I mean, I used this one all the time, but it's really old and they don't make it anymore and I'm no longer grabbing for it. So this is another one that I'm going to pass on. This Hikari product is actually a bronzer, so I guess I should have put it in my bronzer category, but it's like a shimmery, I don't know, radiant thing. Um, this I think was in an Ipsy box and I actually had two different people give it to me because they didn't like it. And I think it's just maybe a kind of an awkward color here. Let me show you all of them swatched together right there. Like, what do you use that for? Like it's too, I, I don't know. You see what I mean? It's just, mm, yeah. So I think I'm gonna pass this one on as well. Oh, this Tarte blush in Tipsy. It is like no other blush in my collection. I really like it. I haven't been wearing it as much recently, but spring and summer, it is gorgeous. These just do not swatch well, but it is a really pretty blush, so that is a keeper. Okay, I've been opening all the lids so that I can kind of see them better and compare them and see if I have any duplicates. I'm noticing I have two kind of soft pinks that are, I'm out of camera. I'm noticing I have two kind of soft pinks here that are pretty similar. This is MAC Dame, a friend sent this to me, and then the L'Oreal True Match Blush in Tender Rose. I've actually been liking this one a lot recently, so I wanna keep it. And this MAC blush is beautiful, I just never use it. So I think I'm gonna pass on the MAC and keep the L'Oreal. Yes, I love my drugstore makeup. I have two other blushes here that are just really, really pink. It is the Clinique, what are these? These flower ones, the Cheek Pops in Plum Pop and this Estee Lauder blush in Electric Pink. Um, I like both of these. I actually got these at a CCO. They're not totally similar, but they kind of serve the same purpose for me. I'm tempted to keep the Estee Lauder just because it's, I don't know, it's really nice, but I think that this color was not, it either wasn't permanent or it was discontinued. You can't get it anymore. So I think I will keep the Clinique and passed on the Estee Lauder. So let's talk about my Wet n Wild blushes. I absolutely love these. Um, this packaging though always breaks on me. Does that happen to anyone else? Anyway, I've got Apricot in the middle and Rosé Champagne. They're so similar, like can I justify keeping both? Um, no, but I'm going to anyway because I love them. And I just love those kind of peachy, bronzy blushes. A blush that is super similar to the Wet n Wild Apricot in the middle is MAC Warm Soul. I should know that. I wear this all the time. So I actually put these side by side in a half drugstore, half high-end video, and I think it worked really well. Um, but again, I just, I love all three of these, so all three are staying. These three here are all luminous, glowy blushes, and honestly, I love them all. MAC Dainty is an all-time favorite. I have worn this, I mean, it's really hard to wear down these baked products, but it's basically flat, if you can see that. And then also NYX. This is the Baked Blush Bronzer thing in Journey. I like this as a blush topper. And then the Becca Mineral Blush in Flower Child that I got in a little kind of uh, sample set. So it's a little smaller, but will probably last, but will probably last forever. Um, yeah, keeping all three of these, they are gorgeous. I'll show you some swatches. So here's the Becca Blush, the NYX Blush, and Dainty from MAC. Um, can I justify all three of those? I'm not sure, but I want them. And I really do like a glowy blush. I think that's kind of my favorite finish. One that is similar to those three, but probably needs to go is the Wet n Wild blush in pearlescent pink. This is gorgeous. I do like it. However, they have re-released it in the new formula and I think the color is a little different. So I don't think I can really call this Wet n Wild pearlescent pink anymore. That still makes sense, but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna pass this one along. And then that leaves me with two pretty neutral blushes. I've got Tarte Exposed, which despite being an old favorite of everyone else is a new one to me. And Revolution, Makeup Revolution Matte Blush in Nude. I got this when my friend Beth and I did that $15 makeup swap, which was super fun. Um, Looking at what I have, these two are both neutral but different in tone and different from anything else in my collection and I'm not really keeping a lot of matte blushes so I definitely want to keep this one and Tarte Exposed just goes with everything so these are both keepers.
Okay, so for blushes, I'm keeping 11 and getting rid of nine. All right, I have got 10 highlighters here. This is going to be a hard one because I love the vast majority of these. Let's just state the obvious, Mary Lou is going nowhere. I love Mary Luminizer from The Balm. This was my first highlighter and probably if I had to pick just one highlighter forever, it would still be this one. It's got a pretty decent size dip in it considering how much product there is. So yes, she is a keeper. I mean, look at that. How could I not keep that? It's so beautiful, so beautiful. One that I am sad to say definitely needs to go is this sleek palette, the highlighting palette in Solstice. My sister picked this up for me when she was in the UK promoting her new album and it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. This one is a cream, but the others are powders and they're just, they're glorious. I mean, do you see that? They don't work on my pale skin. They come off as like colors on my cheeks. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I could work with them, but it's difficult. And I think she would just love using this. So I'm gonna give this one to my sister. A couple more favorites here. This Lorac Illuminating Highlighter in Starlight. This is such a pretty highlighter. I love this, especially for my fair skin. I know I keep saying that, but it's just so like, it has more of a vanilla tone, so it's light, but it's not white, but it's not gold. It just is really beautiful. It is pretty intense and can give a really nice pop on the cheeks. So I definitely wanna keep this. And also the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter that everyone has been talking about lately. It really is that gorgeous. It does not show up as too dark on my skin. I think just because it's so subtle and natural looking and it just you're not even going to be able to see the swatch but this is just what i use now on an everyday basis like when i'm going to be working or doing normal things and i don't want to look crazy this is great i also recommend this for more mature skin or if you have texture you don't want to emphasize i think this would work really well also okay this urban decay afterglow highlighter in aura um this is beautiful it's like the most beautiful kind of pinky highlight it does not work just on my cheeks because as a highlight because obviously it's too pink on me I don't know if these swatches are even showing up but um but I like it as a blush topper and I like it I think I could also maybe start using it as an eyeshadow so maybe I'll put it in with my single eyeshadows for a while and see if I get any use out of it that way the formula is really nice Okay, this Wet n Wild Geometric Highlighting Powder in, what was this called? Oh, Where the Dreamers Go. I have loved this so much. This is one of my favorite drugstore highlighters and I'm gonna pass it on just because you can't get it anymore. Um, it's this combination of being really subtle and kind of glittery, which sounds weird, but for some reason I love, but yeah, I can't talk about it anymore and I have other highlighters I need to be using instead. So <sighs> makes me sad, but I'm going to pass this one on to a new home. The Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. I got this in the same kit as that blush. Also, I got this cream highlighter. Everybody loves these. I mean, they're a beautiful formula, um, but I just don't use this. It's a little bit dark on me. Can you see the swatch? Um, if I compare it to, so if I compare it to like Mary Lou, it's just a little bit too bronzy for my skin, which is weird. I know it's for pale people, but obviously not pale enough people. So I'm gonna pass this one. I think I'll give this one to my sister. I think it would look beautiful on her skin tone. And then this cream, the uh, Shimmering Skin Perfector Spotlight in Moonstone, I do love and I use this a lot. It looks really beautiful. You can kind of build it up, but what I like to do is just put like a really thin layer in highlighty spots over my foundation before I add any powder products and it just, ends up giving this kind of lit from within glow. So this is a keeper. Okay, these, oh, Mary Lou, please. All right, two left. This Stila All Over Shimmer Duo in Kitten is really gorgeous. I love it. It's like a little bit pinky, but I can still wear it. However, this was sent to me by a friend when she went cruelty-free on her channel and Stila is now cruelty-free. So I think I'm gonna send this one back to her in case she wants to try it. So I'm just gonna 
you know, return the love on this one because I have a couple other things this under as well. So I'm gonna pass this one along. Back to its rightful owner. And then the last thing here is this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Illuminating Palette. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love this. I, I don't know, I heard somebody raving about this recently on YouTube and I thought maybe I was wrong. I like it, I think it's really nice. And I think that, I mean, here I am, I sound like I'm contradicting myself. I think it's perfectly nice. I think you can do these middle shades as like a really natural blush. You can use the different highlight shades, but I just never reach for it. I also find the shape and packaging of these to be really clunky and kind of hard to store. So while it's worth it to me for the contour palette I have, I think this one I will let go of. Okay, so I'm actually keeping five and getting rid of five, which is more than I thought I would get rid of. Excellent. Okay, so here is everything I'm keeping. I managed to fit it back into these two drawers here. I am keeping 20 products and getting rid of 16. So pretty good. I'm still kind of impressed with myself. I put all of the highlights and contours and bronzers in this, which will go in the top drawer. The only one that like kind of doesn't fit is this one, but it's close enough. I rearranged this about 25 times to try to make it fit. And then in the second drawer, I will have all my blushes. Now these categories were taking up three drawers before, so I could spread it out, but all I did was stack up the two Wet n Wild blushes and stack up the two Tarte blushes and everything else is visible. So I think that is going to be how I organize these for now. Thank you so much for watching and helping me declutter. Having you guys here really holds me accountable to get rid of things that I no longer need or I'm no longer using. Don't forget to check out my other declutters. There will be a playlist for you if you wanna see those and subscribe so I can see you here next time, hopefully in a video where you actually see my face. I like talking to you guys face to face as well. Um, and let me know if you wanna see me declutter other products. I could do like all of my foundations and powders and concealers, like base, base products. And then I think the only other thing left would be just like random miscellaneous products. So um, let me know if you wanna see those and I will see you guys soon. Bye.